Well, I am so excited to be in Korea. It is a treat for you guys. We are on the Watch On booth today. We're going to give you a tour. I got my friend Klaus, 18 years with Watch On, talk about the history, machining, technology, the family, third generation taking over. And we're going to start with five axis machining, which is one of my favorite topics. Anyway, so Klaus, five axis machining. We got the Harmony technology. We, we can't spend too much time on everything because your booth is massive. But I love that. So let's get into it with five axis machining. Here we go, 5-axis. Not a new technology, but an even more and more important technology. Parts getting more complex, parts getting lesser, so you need machines which are fulfilling all the requirements and applications on the market. Whether it's electronic, whether it's oil and gas, etc. So here we have now a D2. Our 5-axis machines baseline, I would say, since about four or five years. 37 kilowatt spindle power starts with 12,000 RPM and with different options I can optimize it for any application needs. So latest is now our Harmony. You know, young people like to use the app system. Like us, young people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for the flowers. <laughs> so anyway, it starts there, it's very user friendly and our guys told us, even without experience, after three days, you are able to control a machine. Wow. Not necessarily five axes now, but it's easy to learn. And this is what it's all about. Manpower problem, problems with getting qualified engineers, it's everywhere now. But Harmony is one of the solutions in the near future, I would say. Absolutely perfect name. Let's go ahead and start walking this booth. Now, when we walk this booth, we're going to segue into automation. You yeah. mentioned just a second ago that five-axis machining might not be new technology, but there's still people who are hesitating to adapt it. They're so used to that three-axis, so used to the basic, and then we got to get into the automation world as well. How do we build that confidence? Say, look, automation keeps you running 24-7. It helps you make more money, become more efficient. Don't be afraid of the five-axis. Jump yeah. into it. We have everything to take care of you. Absolutely. I mean, automation, again, is nothing new, but today it has become even more important. We just had the subject, labor. Labor and the industry has changed. It's not the mass production so much anymore, but small batches which are frequently changing, right? And look at the pallet changer like here, what we have or not. Pallet changer is an automated workpiece changer. I like that new so, name. So it's a different concept where you load raw material and the finished part practically comes out needing and having a five axis machine. Look at the mix. No part looks at the same. Of course, I can load it with the same parts, but here is high mix, low volume. That's important. Yeah, and that's the brilliance of it. And let's keep walking. I know we have a big pallet chain system over here as well, but let's talk about, as you just mentioned, high mix, low volume, right? Yeah. You can have every single part on that automated cell to be the exact same thing or every single part different, yeah. but that's part of what we're talking about right now as Correct. jobs and batch sizes continue to reduce. But let's go back to your point about labor and the fact that as a machinist, I can now run three, four, five, six machines because I've yeah. set them up and now I can bounce around. So hopefully, if the companies out there are doing it right, we're making more money for running more machines because the companies are making more money. Well, that's and that's the, the automated, yes, yeah, so that is the idea, right? All right, so here I have practically now another solution where I combine two five-axis machines and have a stacker system, a pallet system. Again, the idea is, Bridge the non-productive times. Don't waste time in setting up or calibrating machines. Let it run. You load it here, it goes into the system, and then it disappears to the machine where it goes. All is productivity, efficiency, making more money. Yeah, and those are important keynotes that we need to put out there. Now, you, you mentioned that one's feeding two machines. Is that how that one's working? Yeah. But still yep. the same automated concept of Absolutely. we're doing more, being more efficient. Yep. And you guys have been doing this for a long time, Watch On, in general. Yep. The, the foundation of how your machines are built. As we walk over to the next set of machines, would you mind just sharing how Watch On has developed such a high-precision product by vertically integrating everything within your own system? Look, it, it all is based on really craftsmanship, okay? But being the leader in for mold and dye industry to supply 
precision machines to the mold and die industry. And let's face it, mold and die is still the standard for accuracy in terms of accuracy by microns or surface quality. Okay, so this is very, very important. And there we, of course, learned how to make a machine, what our customers really need. But there's always the balance between the tool makers and the machine makers. They always have to catch up to each other. We've been playing that game a lot, whether it's software, cutting tools, tool holding machines. We're always playing the catch up game. Everyone's exactly. trying to beat each other. Exactly. We're stepping into another world here and I see something that's quite fascinating. Oh, yeah. What in this area can we focus on to make the audience excited as well? Because it's stumbling around this beautiful booth. Matt, first of all, here to my right, this is now, I would say, the, the starting point for the Cyrus U series. And this has become really almost a brand name into the mold and dye industry. It's the UM Plus. Besides, we have the UL Plus and then it's also the UX, which is the next bigger one. However, every machine is made to achieve the highest accuracy, surface quality, and of course, precision, right? So it's really fantastic machines. And again, remember what we said on the horizontal machine? Spindle. That's the heart of the machine. And those machines represent exactly the same. You know what else as we're walking around, and I want to talk about this part a little bit. We can actually jump through here if we, it's so big. We can. But something else I want to talk about is how busy your booth is. I mean, people are loving how much technology you have on this clean booth, just really enjoying the products. Well, you have to make it interesting. It's the same <laughs> like with Harmony, right? <laughs> it is, and everything seems to be in Harmony as well. We can are. we talk quickly about this? Because this looks like a, a, an important piece. It's almost a centerpiece in this area. Yes. and. In the first look, maybe you think it's a gear. It looks like a gear from my mind. But actually, it's for a grain. Is it? Yes, because this one is just the driving gear to, to move, keep it moving. And here will be practically this big steel rope, which is being lead and, and we did the next roll or, or whatever. So this is really for anchors, uh, big wind, winds uh, pulling up stuff. It's, huh. Yeah, it, it's interesting and yeah. you need a big machine for it a really big one which one of your machines would you recommend for this um, this is definitely I would say our VT 3000 VT 4500 even so these are the big ones where this you said really to me on one. one of our other videos oh, when yeah. I thought one was big you said this is medium sized you can put this one on top of it <laughs> <laughs> so I know you want to talk about this machine yeah. as well before we run over to another area what is it about this machine that you want that stands out for everyone watching right now? Um, look, it's again five axes, and you know we can't go around for multi axes, um, having flexible machines, and this is what it's all about: flexibility, right? So a full five axis, like it is demonstrated here, provides you for any part the flexibility to do. And with the spindle power again and the rigidity of the machine, it's no matter whether it's stainless steel, whether it's inconel or whether it's titanium, this machine can do everything. And you will realize the design is kept in a different way because considering we do automation from the side, so you don't block the front. So you, okay, you come in clever. with a robot or a pallet system from the side. Yes. Without interfering the access to the machine. Here. Yeah, I've seen so many situations where that yeah. is exactly a problem right. and you can't get right. access to the machine. Let's continue yeah. walking as well. There's one we're going to talk about late. We have to do a little bit of 3D printing. I mean, that's the they say it's the future. It seems to be the now. Something yeah. about this one is different. We also have a brand new machine that we're introducing as well as a part of the tour. Absolutely. So let's talk 3D printing. I mean, already people get fascinated by what they can create that couldn't yeah. be created before. Yeah, look, a 3D printer, again, is not a new technology. It's long in the market, but it's evolving, okay? And it's evolving to a point where it's now even used in production. But this machine, again, we always want to do it a little bit different than others, uh, is a new system, a new formula how to do it. Usual 3D printers grow from the top downwards. By doing so, you get instability in the workpiece. So you have to design supports to hold the part. With this one, we do go exactly the other way around. 
that is what they call it a layer system. Mm -hmm. You go from the bottom and build it up gradually to the finished product without support. So you get the finished part again without big uh, access. You mentioned that as we take a walk over to this other uh, beautiful machine that we spoke about earlier, you mentioned that it's becoming more productive situations now, yeah. the additive manufacturing and yeah. 3D printing. Are we really at the speeds now where, where additive manufacturing is a part of a production process? Or are we still in the world of being creative and doing maybe mm. S splines in the middle of a part that you can't machine straight? Are right. we in that world yet? This is, of course, one of the parts where, where part really becomes very complicated and difficult to manufacture. Yeah. You have to split it in different parts, which designers usually don't like. Right. But just let's go to a speci specific industry, which I like very much, Formula One. They are using 3D printers today on a daily base, creating all the fancy spoilers or hinges or um, suspension parts without sweet printing, almost impossible to make today on the level we are today. And that's where the production aspect comes into play. Correct. And they are getting better when it comes Absolutely. to speeding things up and yeah. doing things faster Absolutely. and more materials as well. But that's really where it comes into play right now, aerospace. isn't it? Aerospace. Yeah. I mean, they use Tons in aerospace. Sure, sure. So it's, it's definitely a growing in, uh, market, a growing industry, there's no doubt. Will it replace the traditional chip making industry like our milling and turning machines? I don't think so. <laughs> not, not in the mass production, except in 50 years, maybe something completely new is coming. There's always discussions, always isn't possible. there? All right, a new machine we have here, the i2. We have a separate video on this machine where you and I discuss its capabilities. Yeah. Much longer video than we're going to do right now for everyone listening and watching right now. Yeah. Um, tune into that video if you want the real details. But this is brand new for you guys. It is a turn mill. It does have two spindles, and it has that B axis that everyone seems to be right. liking these days. Right. Why did you guys just develop this machine for your customers? Look, it's again the trend in the industry. Remember what I just mentioned before, high mix, low volume. High and mix, this, low volume. And this machine definitely goes in the same direction. It's not mass, mass production. Okay, not thousands or millions of parts. It's impossible to do it. But complex parts, this is where this machine has a run. And by the way, as an option, this machine is also designed then with a second turret underneath. So you had not only the B-axis, but also a second turret. Brilliant. And the tool magazine. The tool magazines in the hour days on each machine, also 5-axis, getting bigger and bigger. Because the customers, again, want to load every tool, no matter what comes, computer knows it's in the magazine, off you go. Yeah, Klaus, let's you know, continue to walk. You're right. Something I'd like to bring up with you, if that's okay, is what you just said about it's it's... For that high mix, low volume, right? And, and for the audience out there, what happens when you have that complex part that you have in that machine right now that used to take three, four, five, six yep. machines? Yep. How much floor space was wasted? How much work holding sure. was wasted? How yep. much tooling? How much time? All of this stuff was wasted. So yes, if it's in one machine and it's yep. high mix, low volume and not production, it's, a, it's a, perfect, a perfect solution. And besides, of course, the manpower. The manpower. Okay. Why did I even say that? Yeah. Secondly. Every time you move the part, there's a danger that you lose accuracy, that you lose the position. It's, it's affected. So you need to be even more careful and it takes even more time. All, Today, all right. Can't, anybody can afford this anymore. Yeah, you know, it's all too right. expensive. It's too expensive not to do these things. Yeah. When somebody says, yeah. that machine costs too much, I dare you to weigh the cost at the end of the day and that price per part versus the exact same thing. You're going to win every time by investing in technology. So now one typical part which exactly can't afford to make a mistake. Is this Look big this. one? It looks simple and this is actually the drive shaft for a windmill. And we all know the new energies and windmill is a big part of it. Huge. 30, 40 years ago, wasn't available. Now we have it but you need the machine to make this part Is it in in one go. Not just turning, you have to do the drilling, everything in one setting. And of course we have a machine that's going to do this all in one go on this booth, right? Um, it's not the same machine, but it comes from the family. 
the family. The family. They're cousins of each other, right? Because this one will be too big. It's 120 ton. It's not. But this one, the one we're going to look at as we close this conversation out, is a good size machine oh, yeah, as yeah, well. Oh yeah, sure. It's the same range. You know what I'd like to bring up, if it's okay with you as well, Klaus? You and I have been doing this for for quite a while. This the the idea of being in machining. How much respect can we give to the folks that used to do that and some of these other parts almost yeah. manually, yeah. right? Yeah. What kind of industry yeah. really put this all together a hundred years ago, yeah, 60 true. years ago. I mean, just kudos to all you old school machinists out yeah. there. Yeah. Gantry machine, we know it's all about speed. What else do we have in Gantry world? Well, this, this of course, the machine is exactly the opposite. This is made for production, okay? I load the parts, the raw parts into the magazine, the Gantry loads it into the spindle and the finished part comes out, but mass production. It kind of sounds like as we finish up on this huge, well, I say huge, you're going to tell me it's medium probably, but this good-sized machine down at the end, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds to me like if I was to start a machine shop, I could be in almost any industry I want to and make almost any part I want to, and you could support me. Look, as a typical job shopper, what you just mentioned, right? This is a small company with a couple of machines, maybe even only with one machine. How you want to make this part? If you want to make this part now, in, in single-handedly, you need about three, four machines. Let's do this one. All in one. You load the raw material in, this one comes out. Finished bit. Yeah, and those parts, to my knowledge, are typically made in the hundreds or the thousands Correct. or the tens of thousands. Correct. So it does go back to that high production world that Correct. you spoke of Correct. and all the speed of what a gantry loader brings yeah. to the table, a side one and a side two, both on the same, same machine. Okay. This is the machine that I feel like is a big machine. I feel like that part is huge, and you're going to tell me it's small, aren't you? Okay, it's a, it's it's not a big one. It's not a small one. It's again a medium sized okay. machine. Okay, but uh, joke aside, this machine, Mega One Ten, uh, I think this is a four or five meter uh, distance. It's it can go up to seven meter. Then from the same family, we can go up to ten meter, and the bigger brothers from it go up to seventeen meter. This is the for ship industry drive shafts, things like this. So it's heavy duty machines and their automation is almost impossible. This, you still need a crane for it. <laughs> well, you, you and I are picking it up by hand while other people are using cranes, I think. Uh, I think I, I say, okay, I have to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back is hurt, no, no, back no, no, is hurt. No. Klaus, this has been a wonderful tour of the booth and I know we're getting a bit long, but I wanna close this <clears> out with something that's really important for the audience to understand and that's the differences, the differences of why watch on. We talked about it a little bit, yeah. building from the base all the way up, yeah. your own foundry, eight different facilities that you have making things. The the fact that you make components for all different parts, including some of your, you know, other Korean machine makers here. Let's just connect with an audience real quick as we continue to repeat the name, watch on, watch on, embed that name in people's minds. What are the differences that really help you stand out when someone goes, why would I work with watch on? Third generation, really a, a family style company. Yeah. Why? Tell me why. Look. One of the points, as I repeated before, is the mechanical structure, how our machines are made and put together. But a more important point comes now. When you buy machines from us, when you come from us, you become a really partner and customer and not a number. And I think that makes a big difference. Because people investing in this kind of machine, they need help later on, they need support later on. And preferably for me is always the best advertising if they comes and buy a second machine, a third one, etc. So this is what it is. You need a partnership. Unfortunately, it goes lost a little bit in the industry because of the hectic where we are living in the outdoors. But there's still a need of partnership, trust, and knowing he will help me if I need help. It's a great way to close it out. I don't have anything better to say, Klaus. You have nailed it, my friend. Every part of this conversation has been inspirational and Good. informative, and I know the audience has enjoyed it as well. So Appreciate thank you thank for you sharing for your time. Through. Absolutely. Time is the most valuable commodity Good. we can never manufacture or ever get back. So thank you for sharing it with us as well. I hope we've done you justice sharing this gorgeous watch-on booth with the world. Okay, great. Much appreciated.